Welcome to Motor One. Today we are just outside Charlotte, North Carolina at the Ford Performance Technical Center where we are the first ones to experience Mustang Mach-E outside of the company. However, we are not going to be driving the car in physical form. We will be driving it in an extremely realistic virtual vehicle development simulator. The Mustang Mach-E is an all-electric SUV featuring a targeted 300 mile long range, quick acceleration, and connected vehicle technologies. With reservations already being open, we expect Mustang Mach-E to start deliveries later this year. This SUV is the first addition to the Mustang family in over 55 years, and Ford invited us here to see if the Mach-E still retains the Mustang spirit behind the wheel. Before we really get into driving Mustang Mach-E, let's talk about the simulator itself. This simulator is essentially a tub sitting on a robotic chassis underneath. Inside of the tub is a Shelby GT500 interior, which is really cool. When you climb up into this contraption, put your seatbelt on and put on the noise canceling headphones, you really do feel like you're sitting inside of a normal car, which makes sense because you're inside a Shelby interior. My experience in the simulator started out driving a front engine rear wheel drive V8 sports car. You can take your guess as to what that was. Once I became comfortable with that experience, I was instantly transformed into driving a pickup truck with its payload at maximum, which was a huge change. It really showed how diverse the simulator was and how accurate it made it feel like you were driving a normal car. Once I became comfortable with the simulator, some of the differences from real life into the sim world, I asked to drive the Mustang Mach-E and they put me in the dual motor all wheel drive version as mentioned. There was an instant change behind the wheel and now you will get to hear what it was like behind the wheel. And this is not the GT version, but let's give it a go at some full power punch. Let's go in three, two, one instant acceleration look at the numbers climb up on this thing 50 60 70 75 well the acceleration is definitely impressive especially coming out of that pickup truck but just in general watching those numbers climb up um, this would indicate it's definitely not going to be slow it also means the GT version is going to be pretty wild but let's back it back down to I don't know 30 miles an hour or so and for those that don't know the simulator simulates all vehicle movements, suspension, everything included here. So we're going to go 30 and punch it instant. It's pretty amazing. 50, 60, I mean that 30 to 60 is pretty incredible. Now keep in mind the vehicle will pipe some sound into the cabin. So that's what you're hearing in the background there. This is not the finalized sound design version but it is a really good representation to indicate speed with noise. And I think that makes it probably a little bit more fun. It almost wants to egg you on to keep putting your foot into the power. So we've seen it on a tight handling, or sorry, the high speed loop. Let's see what happens when we go onto the tight handling circuit and do a little bit of driving around some tighter corners. We're gonna drive over the grass because we can. <laughs> you can feel all the movement here. It's pretty, pretty amazing. It would be just as if you were driving it in real life. That is cool. And so the Ford engineers use this simulator to hone all of their cars, and especially Mustang Mach-E. They took this car from concept to much closer to reality just through driving the simulator. Oh, that was a dead end. Whoops. We're just off-roading it. jump wow you can really feel that through the simulator this is so cool corners wow the turn in is extremely sharp look at that turn in right at the limit of grip understeering a little bit but that's my fault for coming in a little too hot but i should say when i did say understeer that actually it was quite neutrally balanced especially as you apply a little power you can even get a little lift off oversteer right there so that you can have some fun with this thing for sure. First impression from the seat of the pants feel is 
Uh, suspension calibration is meant really for performance. When I turn this car into a corner, for example, you can see it changes directions extremely quickly. I turn the wheel and boom, instantly we've changed. Another thing you'll notice and you can feel here is just how neutral the car is. When I shove this thing into a corner, it doesn't push forwards, it doesn't understeer. The rear end wants to come out for a little play, which is exactly what you want in a fun, performance-oriented vehicle. For example, here we'll go hard left. You can see the back end want to step out slightly. It's still controllable, it's not scary. I think that's very important to have in a car that wears the Mustang badge. The steering, we talked to Heather earlier. Heather made a point that says steering's really important for Ford, especially for their performance vehicles. That sharp turn in, the really nice long corners where you can just lock a steering angle and let it go. These are all things that they've probably spent so much time on to get correct. And it's cool to see it translate here into the sim. We've also learned the Mustang Mach-E will have adjustable regen by the user. And so essentially you'll be able to choose a, a low regen setting like I'm in now, which is very much a coasting setting. And then you'll be able to go to a harder regen and then even one pedal driving. And because the Mustang Mach-E uses permanent magnet motors, you're able to get quite a bit of regen at low speeds. And if you wanna to come to a complete stop, the one pedal driving setting will also blend brakes at low speed so you never have to touch the brake pedal unless when you want to slow down rapidly. That's pretty cool. The biggest takeaway here though is just the acceleration of the Mach-E. I'm going to put my foot down again. These numbers just climb and climb and climb and climb. That is very impressive. So what we've learned from our first experience driving the Mach-E is that it is extremely performance oriented. It's not going to beat you up on the street. I can feel over these little bumps that it's still compliant, it handles it very nicely. But as soon as you want to turn up the dial to 11 and have a little bit of fun, it certainly allows you to have those quick, agile movements of the car. And that's partially helped by having the battery nice and low in the chassis. Other things we've learned, acceleration is insane. I think, you know, we all know electric cars are fast and Ford is really touting their acceleration with electric motors and everyone is really excited about the instant power and I see that translates really well to the car. And lastly, this just feels like a really nice place to spend time. It's a car that's gonna be really fun when you want to have some fun on a back road or maybe even a track here or there and it's gonna be super comfortable for long highway trips. I'm just cruising along here at 40 miles an hour. It's comfortable. It seems to soak up these bumps really well. I think this simulator, first off, is really cool. It's amazing to see how they engineered this car and others using virtual design and engineering. That's amazing. And then also to see it translate in the real world. Stay tuned because later this year, we will get to drive the real car. But for now, it was great to gain some insight as to how Ford tuned the Mach-E with this awesome simulator.